What's going on, guys? Rogue One hits theaters on December 16th. So we've set out with the simple task of determining the greatest Star Wars character of all time. Wow, uh, a monumental task lies ahead. But we've got an epic panel of Sith and Jedi minds to help us determine the greatest character in the Star Wars galaxy. Ah, let's meet our panel. He's an old friend of the show. You know him from Belated Media, and he's made some excellent Star Wars related videos. Welcome back, Michael Barrett. Thank you for having me. This man is an old pal of the show. Ah, you know him, you love him. And you can see him on Collider's Jedi Council. Welcome back, Christian Harloff. Ah, our old pal. You know him as the pit boss. Uh, you can see him on Collider, and you can hear him on the Star Wars related podcast, Force Center, Ken Napsok. We've broken the Star Wars universe down into nine specific divisions of characters, and we're gonna work our way through each division until we come down to two final Star Wars characters, and then we will determine the one Star Wars character to reign supreme and name them the best Star Wars character of all time. All right, our first division. We're going to determine a winner of the Nerf Herder slash Friends of Solo Division. You're going to choose from Chewbacca, Lando Calrissian, Maz Kanata, and Greedo. Michael, let's start with you. Pick one of those four. He's the smoothest dude in the galaxy. It's Lando Calrissian. Hello, what have we here? Boom, that's one for Lando. Christian. You, you don't go against the family dog, it's Chewbacca. Chewbacca, 1-1, one, one. Ken Knapsack. Oh, you're breaking my heart already, but I'm gonna go with Lando as well wow. because that is a character that helped expand the universe in Empire Strikes Back. Whoa, that is a huge upset. How dare Lando you people? Lando Calrissian. How dare you people? They won't even cast Lando in other movies. They put it, they finally got him in a younger version in Han Solo. We haven't seen it yet. Chewbacca has been the glue. Wow, already an upset, an epic character falling in the first round. <laughs> okay, so Lando moves on. Next. The Sith Division. Emperor Palpatine, Darth Maul, Count Dooku, and General Grievous. Let's start down on this end with Ken Napsok. Uh, you know, there's some interesting characters there. Dooku is more layered than people give him credit for, but good, good Emperor Palpatine is the man. That's one for Palpatine. Let's come right around to Michael Barrett. I'm split between Palpatine and Maul. Mm. Palpatine has a long-standing history of evil, and yeah, he's got an exceptional voice. I, however, am going to go with Maul purely based on potential, and if we can expand just a little bit out into the Clone Wars, like, he's a fun character that gets a little bit more to do in there. Maul's great, and Maul did have a great arc in both Clone Wars and in Rebels, but Palpatine kicked his face in. Like, they fought in the Clone Wars, he beat him. And what it is about Palpatine he was the Phantom Menace. He was the one that built all this. He built the Empire, and they're still following his design in The Force Awakens. It's Palpatine. The Force is strong in Palpatine. Moving on. Good. Good. Next up, the Jedi Master Division. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yoda. Mace Windu. Qui-Gon Jinn. Let's start with Christian Harloff. This is gonna be tough. I'm gonna go Obi-Wan, and I'll tell you why. Because Obi-Wan basically throughout had to protect Luke Skywalker, who's without Obi-Wan's protection in the beginning. Yeah, Yoda trained him, but Obi-Wan kept him alive for all those years. So it's just, it's tough, but I'm just gonna go Obi-Wan. Can't go wrong there, Michael. I'm, I'm in the same camp on your logic. That said, Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn, I do love a lot. I just want to put that one out. But you're, ta but you're taking I'm Obi taking Obi-Wan. Oh, okay, okay. I'm taking yeah, Obi-Wan yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Ken, who would you have chosen just for uh, sake of it argument? It would have been a clean sweep with Obi-Wan, but Yoda definitely carries some weight. Oh yeah, gotta show some love for Yoda. Yoda uh, did so much. I mean, look, Yoda trained Obi-Wan. Yoda was the one who got Obi-Wan out. Revenge of the Sith was basically telling him, look, here, here's what I found. I was able to contact your old master. Yoda is the guru of it all. Mm -hmm. But it's just something overall, the, the arcing story. Oh, yeah. Obi-Wan is moving on. Failed, I have. Let's move on to the Rebellion Division. Competing here are Wedge Antilles, Admiral Akbar, Mon Mothma, Bail Organa, and Padme Amidala. Where's Porkins? Much like the Battle of Yavin, Porkins didn't make it. Pour some out for Porkins. There you go. Let's start with Ken. You know what I'm gonna do? Wild card pick, Padme Amidala. Whoa! That is one for Padme. 
Christian. This particular category has to play into the other canon stuff, the Clone Wars, the books. And because of that, I am going to go Wedge Antilles. I think that Padme is also an argument for that because of everything she did in the Clone Wars Clone series. Clone Wars expanded Padme Abs a lot. Absolutely. But with Wedge, he is a character that was really one of the faces, an unsung hero, really, of the Rebellion. He should be respected a lot more. Well, you just threw a wedge in Padme's plans, Michael Baratini. I'm going to throw a further wedge because I'm going Mon Mothma. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Whoa. She's a huge orchestrator of all the events on the trench run, and then we're going to be seeing more of her in Rogue One. I'm excited to be seeing that and I think there's a lot to her character and I don't know she she fascinates me okay well Admiral Akbar will be trapped in the first round it's a trap but we have a three-way tie to see who will move on Wedge Antilles Mon Mothma Padme Amidala Ken is there is there any swaying you Michael Christian is there any flexibility yeah here? I'm gonna change my pick oh really I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to a win here and I'm gonna go with Mon Mothma. I wow. think that Mon Mothma, especially even, I know that the movie hasn't come out yet, but you look at just the trailers, it looks like she's going to be bringing in Jyn Erso to do a lot of this stuff, so she's going to have a bigger role. And was in a deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith forming the rebellion. It's Mon Mothma, you're right. All right, there we go. Mon Mothma moving on. Let's travel to the Force Awakens division. Your choices are Rey, Poe Dameron, Finn, and Kylo Ren. Let's start with Michael. I'm gonna go Finn on this one. He is driven and looking to make some serious shakeups in the galaxy. Gotcha, that's one vote for Finn. Let's go back around to Ken. To me, Rey is one of the most important Star Wars figures. She is a very powerful character, and I know that sometimes rub people the wrong way, but it was important to have that character take that journey, and I love the moment where she goes from, I thought Luke Skywalker was a myth, to she's handing the lightsaber to Luke at the end. It gets me emotional every time. It's my favorite ending in Star Wars. She's one of my favorite characters. Nicely put. Okay, so we have one for Rey, one for Finn. It's the easiest one so far for me, and it's Rey. You just automatically connect to her. What is it? Does she have parallels to Luke in one way or another? Yes. Whether or not she's really related to him, we'll find that out. But it's that hero's journey that she's on and we're on it with her, so it's Rey. There's so much to look forward to with Rey and she is moving on right here in our bracket. What'd you do? I bypassed the compressor. Moving on to the monster division. Sarlacc, Rancor, Space Slug, Wampa. Christian Harloff. When the first time you saw the Rancor in Return of the Jedi, it's horrifying. It really is that Luke's got to fight it with a rock. I mean, it's just all these things. It's the Rancor. It's great stuff. Okay, Michael Barrity. I'm going Wampa on this one. Woo. The Wampa's great not only in the fact that it is monstrous, but it also shows how far Luke has come as a Jedi because this is the very first time that he pulls the lightsaber with the Force. Good argument. That's one for the Wampa, so we're tied up. Rancor, Wampa, each have one. Ken Knapsack. I have to go back to when I was seven, sitting in the theater, watching Return of the Jedi. The Rancor came on. I did this. Ah! Rancor. For scaring a young Ken Knapsack, the Rancor moves on. Some have called this collection of gentlemen the most wretched hive of scum and villainy in the galaxy. Who's but, been saying that? Talking to my mother. But right now, we're going to determine the winner of the scum and villainy division. Jabba the Hutt, Boba Fett, Sebulba, Grand Moff Tarkin, Harloff. Darn it. Oh, I gotta do it again. I gotta pull. I gotta pull from uh, not just the movies here. I gotta go through Clone Wars, and I gotta go through Rebels, and I have to go through the novels. And I gotta say, it's Tarkin. Tarkin is is ruthless. Tarkin is intelligent. Tarkin is second to the Emperor as one of the best villains of all time. It's Tarkin. There you go. I hear what you're Tarkin about. <laughs> Ken Knapsack. I hate to sound like Captain Cannon over here, yeah. but I got to go to the books. And James Lucino's writing of Tarkin in both the book Tarkin and now Catalyst adds a layer to Tarkin. He's not just Peter Cushing and slippers to me anymore. He's a man holding the Empire's leash, not just Vader's. I'm going Tarkin. Vader, release him. As you wish. <clears throat> That is two for Tarkin. He wins it right off the bat. Michael, would you have anything else to say? I mean, I was definitely leaning Tarkin. That said, I do really love Jabba the Hutt. Jabba was great. If Tarkin wasn't in there, Jabba would have got my vote. <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin, moving on. We have two divisions left. First up, the sidekick division. C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8, Wicket. Salacious B. Crumb and Jar Jar Binks. Oh, how dare you. Jar Jar in a clean sweep? <laughs> Michael Barrity. My mind is going in so many different places. Rolling through all my logic there, it's gonna go to R2-D2. Boom. 1-0. R2-D2. Christian? 
Yeah, look, it's a two-way race between the old school and the new school. It's between R2-D2 and BB-8. BB-8, very helpful. We haven't seen what he's going to do yet, but we have seen the body of work of R2-D2. He's great. He's calm. He's cool, collected. He'll get smashed to bits, and he'll still come back and help out another day. He's great. Takes a look and keep on ticking. That's R2-D2 moving on. Ken, any thoughts? I mean, Salacious B-Crumbs laugh <laughs> yeah. is worth it. <laughs> but keep, keep in mind this fact about R2-D2. He kept the secret of who Luke's family was in the history, right. he kept it the entire time. Obi-Wan and Bail Organa, everyone trusted that little they trash. Didn't they didn't wipe his mind. They didn't wipe his mind. Yeah, the guy's a vault. All right, R2-D2 moving on. This is the final division of this bracket. We've worked our way through eight divisions. There's one more division out there with major characters in it that you're probably all thinking about. We'll get to that in just a sec. Let's keep going through our bracket. So guys, I know it was super tough to make those choices, but now it gets even tougher because all of those winners are facing off against each other. Can you believe it? Let's do this. The Nerf Herder Division versus the Sith Division. Lando Calrissian versus Emperor Palpatine. Let's start with Ken Napzok. Oh, man, I love Lando. I love that cape. He's so smooth. He's cool. And he changed. His character changed. But she, Palpatine, is the force of evil in the story of the galaxy. I gotta go with Palpatine. That's one vote for Emperor P. Michael. It's yeah. Palpatine all the way. He is so very good. Yes, Christian. It's a sweep. It is palpable for Palpatine. Clean sweep. This deal is getting worse all the time. All right. Woo. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what you have to say about this one. The winner of the Jedi Master Division versus the winner of the Rebellion Division. Mon Mothma from Rebellion versus Obi Wan Kenobi. Christian. Poor Mon Mothma. She has to face Obi Wan yeah. in the second round here. I mean, it's Obi Wan. There's just so much more to what he means to the overall story of Star Wars. So yeah, it's, it's Obi Wan. Certainly. Ken. Well, perfect world. These two would have dated and fallen in love. <laughs> hey. But right now, Obi-Wan's got a defeat her. Mon Mothma is great. She's powerful. She's important. But Obi-Wan is one of the central characters to the story. Michael, any other thoughts? It's a sweep. There you go. Obi-Wan moving on. I have the high ground. All right. The Force Division versus the Monster Division. Ray versus the Rancor. <laughs> Another sweep. Michael. That's a battle I'd love to see, yeah. first of all, yeah. but it's definitely Ray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Ray. 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 Great. Definitely the Ray. Ray. <laughs> Moving on. You know what? We said it was going to be super hard. This has been easy. Once we weeded them out, yeah. now yeah. it's clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The first round was close. Um, yeah, some great characters to choose from here. The scum and villainy division versus the sidekick division. Grand Moff Tarkin versus R2-D2. This is a tougher one. Let's start with you, Christian. This is a tougher one for sure. I'm gonna say R2-D2. R2-D2 over Tarkin because R2's still running around. Tarkin mm -hmm. got blown up. All right, that's one for the trash can. Ken. The imprint of Tarkin, the Tarkin Doctrine, what it meant, what he helped do in a bad way when the Republic became the Empire. Tarkin Town. Tarkin Town. I'm going with Tarkin. Boom! We're all tied up at 1-1. You have the most important job in the galaxy, it Michael Barrett. It all Barrett. comes down to you. I know. You two have the advantage in knowing more history around the character uh, of Tarkin. So based on purely my knowledge of the films, I do have to sway to R2-D2, and you can give me a reading list all after right. this video fair, is fair. done. Boom. R2-D2 moving on. Let's move on to the next round. Emperor Palpatine versus Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's a tough one. That's um, a fair fight. Yeah, Ken, talk to us. Oh man, I mean, you got a man I love to quote in everyday business meetings in Palpatine. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. I'm still sticking to Obi-Wan Kenobi, maybe because I want more of him. I want Obi-Wan in the desert. I want to know about young Obi-Wan more. There's so much to that character. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Bam, that's one for Obi-Wan. Christian. These are two of my favorite characters in Star Wars. Emperor Palpatine, without him, you don't get Vader. You don't get the Death Star. You don't get the Empire. He constructed everything great that we know. He sent Yoda into hiding. He sent Obi-Wan into hiding. Palpatine. Wow, powerful argument. Michael Barrett, it all comes down to you. Wow, how did you get this job again? I don't know! The most crucial job in the galaxy. All right. Wow, it is very true that Palpatine drove Obi-Wan into hiding. Obi-Wan ultimately got the last laugh on Palpatine. Did he? In the fact that his own apprentice turned against him by means of the one that Obi-Wan then pushed over the edge and trained 
turned his own father back. Yeah, but we still don't know what's going to happen through 7, 8, and 9, what imprint he had there. There's still more to come in the legacy of Palpatine. But we're, it, we're, we're dealing with the right now. We're, we are so the right Michael, now. So Michael, give us seven. a choice. Episode if there's a lot of talk, we need to pick one. Obi-Wan. It's Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. It's Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, moving on. You have failed me. All right. Woo, we got a great semifinal matchup brewing, but we need one more competitor. Gentlemen, you got to choose between Ray and R2-D2. Michael Barrity, we're starting with you. While we've seen a legacy in R2-D2, I am very intrigued by the legacy of Ray. And I am going with Ray for that very reason. Bam, that's one vote for Ray. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a clean sweep here, Christian. too. So I'm going, I'm going with Ray for Ray. sure. Mm-hmm. Ken? Definitely gonna go with Ray. Ray. Bam. Clean sweeper Rooney. <laughs> what we've got here is the final matchup of these divisions. We started with eight divisions, we had a winner come out of each, and now we've whittled it down to the two finalists to determine who will go into the finals to face someone from the division we're going to talk about in just a moment. Guys, it's Ray versus Obi Wan Kenobi. Christian Harloff. Ray does not have the legacy yet that Obi Wan has. She's a strong character. I still believe she's developing. We're going to learn a lot more about her. But there's also room for failure. There's room for something to happen in episode eight and nine where I'm like, I don't know if I like the way she's going. I have seen an established career already from Obi Wan Kenobi. He was one of the best things in the prequels and certainly one of the best things in the original trilogy. Obi Wan Kenobi. That's one vote for Obi Wan. Ken Napsok. I know we can't base a lot on the future, but I will base on something that Obi-Wan said to Rey in Force Awakens. Rey, these are your first steps. She's got Obi-Wan's vote, she's got mine. I'm going Rey. Wow. Boom. We are tied up. Michael, you have the most important job in the galaxy. You gotta stop doing this to me, (laughs) Hal! Both are convincing arguments. I, I do, however, side more with Christian on the fact of long-standing legacy and we don't know yet where Rey is going to fully land. I gotta give it to Obi-Wan. I gotta. Well, gentlemen, Obi-Wan Kenobi has struck down all of the other characters to become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. But he is not our overall winner yet because he must face whoever comes out of the all-star division. Oh yeah, we weren't gonna leave these guys off the list. Relax. Cool your jets, erase that mean comment that you were gonna write. Let's hear who you have to choose from in the all-star division. Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Leia Organa, Darth Vader. A real toughie. Michael, let's start with you. I think because the overall Star Wars saga until seven and truthfully carrying into seven is the fall and redemption of Darth Vader, I'm going Darth Vader. That's one vote. Darth Vader. Let's go to Ken. She was an orphan, adopted, raised by another family, and she went to that family's politics. She helped establish the rebellion. When her planet was destroyed, it was Luke that needed a blanket and comfort. She fought on. She was on the front lines of Empire. She was one of the key characters in Jedi. Then she helped reform the galaxy, and as you read on, she is the reason, the only person standing strong against the First Order. She is General Leia Organa. She is, to me, the best Star Wars character. Wow. Ken goes with Leia Organa, a.k.a. Princess Leia, a.k.a. General Leia. General Leia. Adorable arguments. Um, I, I, <laughs> oh. I, here, here, here's the thing, is that why... The sarcasm is strong. Why was one. Luke in a blanket? Because he was the one going toe-to-toe with Darth Vader. Ultimately, starting Darth Vader's turn and beginning that redemption that became so strong. Without Luke, he's still running around causing havoc. It's all about Luke. Wow. We are split. We have a three-way split on this between Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia. Han Solo fell off the bridge. He's, uh, oh, man. Too soon. But we are down to these three. Could anyone be swayed? Christian! I can't be swayed. Uh, Cannot be swayed. You can't be swayed off Luke? All right. I'll go with a Vader argument because of this. Ooh. Luke is going to factor into 8 and 9. Luke's definitely factor into 7. But what happened to Luke between 6 and 7? He got scared and ran away. That's not true. Because the That's shadow of his father, the mistakes of his father probably haunted him. Uh, and now the most powerful enemy emerging in the galaxy. You're going with probably. Worships no, no, no. With Worships the burnt helmet of Vader. The shadow of Anakin is still over this galaxy. Oh, man. That is, that, I'll go I, with Darth Vader. But wait. 
Your argument, while I convinced you to go to Vader, your argument convinced me to go to Luke. See? What? Now look. Here, now here, really? Yeah, but look. Yeah. I, I think his argument is very convincing that it is Luke who turns Vader, so Luke is inherently so the one who has most impact. Your vote went to Vader, yes. but your vote went to Luke, and in an unprecedented turn of events, Luke Skywalker is moving on to the finals. We've seen nothing like it in the history of these weird bracket shows that we do. Gentlemen, this means the final matchup is set to determine the greatest Star Wars character of all time. And uh, yeah, it's a clash of old friends. Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Luke Skywalker. Let's start with Ken Napsa. Of course. Um, look, I can make a case for Obi-Wan, but it's hard to argue that he handed off the baton to Luke and that Luke is the hero the galaxy needed. Bam, that's one vote for Luke. Luke is definitely standing on the shoulders of giants. I do feel that Luke is the carrying point and trajectory, also carrying us forward into seven and beyond. So yes, I'm going Luke. Well, we've got a clean sweep. Luke Skywalker was not running away from his father. He was looking for the force during those times and learning more about himself, his, his legacy, building upon that. And we're about to see more greatness from Luke Skywalker in episode eight, so it's Luke. Gentlemen, this will be a day long remembered. The day that you chose Luke Skywalker as the greatest Star Wars character, it's Luke Skywalker. Wow, how about it? I think we're gonna still be arguing in the car. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about our choices? Who's your favorite Star Wars character of all time? Let us know in the comment section below. We wanna know. I gotta thank this awesome panel. Michael Barrity, Christian Harloff, check him out on Collider, Schmoes No, and Ken Knapsack. Good to see you again, buddy. And thank you for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye bye. Hey guys, did you know that this end card works with your phone now? I know, right? Click the boxes below to watch more Screen Junkies videos and click the Screen Junkies logo to subscribe and get this show, Honest Trailers, Movie Fights, and more.